How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Can you see me? I can see you very clearly. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, Bishop, uh, I will leave uh, the machine to you and uh, my brother Papani, and uh, you keep on holding on. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Hello, yeah, Bishop. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, Papa? Uh, good. <laughs> and praise be good. to the Almighty God for all the saints over there in America. Yes, same yeah. here, same here. To all yeah. the saints over there in Bell. And remind them, Jesus Christ did not die and resurrect last week. <laughs> that is a falsehood. Stop lying to the people. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, that is amazing, eh? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so as usual, we've uh, we've come uh, to the another edition. It's like uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth sh shall make you free. Now, like I've been saying, uh, this program is actually dedicated to all the uh, scattered Israelites in diaspora. Now we only teach the truth, nothing but the truth. And this program is quite exceptional from all the. Uh, programs that he's been doing concerning the Bible. But our main job is to wake up the tribes. And our main job also is to wake up the tribes and to teach righteousness that the next kingdom that everybody is hoping for, that that kingdom is for the saints and Christ is coming back to come and rule in our midst. That's right. Yeah, so uh, Bishop. Yes, sir. Uh, I think today's topic is uh, about... Uh, uh, today's topic concerning about uh, the mistakes we make in the truth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So after we we made those mistakes, we shouldn't <laughs> dwell on the mistake, but still uh, the, the 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 fight is on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So Definitely. today, this is what is going to be our topic. Uh -huh. okay. okay. That's a heavy topic. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, uh, Bishop, the ball is in your court. Our listeners are also listening. Okay, all right. Well, I would love to begin in the book of Matthew, the third chapter. Uh, yes. In this proof, where we do make mistakes, we do make errors, we at times find ourselves in sin. Yeah. Uh, but that is what occurs in this truth. Because remember, remember as we become born again, Let's say, for example, you're 30 years old. Yeah. You have 30 years of sin in your head that you have to try to overcome now. Yeah. 30 years of indoctrination of lies and philosophies you have to push from your spirit, from your brain. Yeah. So, in Matthew 3, verse 8, I want to start there because what happens is that sometimes we come in this truth and we believe that all we need to know is that we're Israelites... And we are good with God. And that is not true. Okay? Watch what John the Baptist says to the scribes and Pharisees. Okay? okay. You want me to read it, Papani? Or you yeah, want to no, read it? No, I, I will read so that it will be very also easy for you to uh, do the interpretation. Okay? Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Yeah, Matthew 3, 8. Bring forth therefore fruit, meet for repentance. Okay, that first verse right there, bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. The word meet there is an old English word that means good. Mm -hmm. Bring forth therefore fruit, good for repentance. Uh, repentance means to show that yourself is approved of God. Okay. Okay, meaning you have returned to God by keeping the commandments. That's what it's going into. Read on. Nine, and take note to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see that? Yeah. So John says, don't think to say you got Abraham for your father. So likewise today, many of us say, oh, we're descendants of Abraham. We're good. We don't have to do anything. All we have to do is know that we are descended of Abraham. John says that's not good enough because God can raise up children of Abraham from rocks. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then 10. And now also the axe 
is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Right. So every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit, meaning the tree is you. Every Israelite that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into fire. What is that fire? The lake of fire, which is thermal nuclear destruction. But what is the good fruits we must all bring forth? Let's go to the book of Galatians, okay. chapter 5. What is the good fruit? That is the question. Because many of your listeners may have come to the realization that they're Israelites. Okay. Okay. But now they must bring forth good fruits. Yeah. Okay. Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. So... The first question I have, what is love, Papani? What is love? Because that's the first fruit you got to bring, yeah. bring forth. Uh, love, what yeah. is that? No, normally, uh, the love, according to the Bible, is God says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Very good. That's it. That's what you just quoted is John 14, 15. Yeah. Uh, let me give you another one in uh, 2 John verse 6. Second John. Uh, yes, this is what many people or Christians ignore. They ignore John fourteen fifteen as you quoted, yeah. and they also ignore Second John verse six. Yeah, Second John verse uh, six. And this is love that will work after His commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So you see what love is? Yeah. The love is talking about keeping God's command. Tell us look at first John five verse three. First John five verse three. First John five verse three. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Right. You see when it says his yeah. commandments are not grievous, man, yeah. they're not hard. Yeah. They're not hard at all. Yeah. But the world teaches you that the commandments are hard and grievous. No, no. they're not. It's very easy to do. Okay. Yeah. Now, the commandments he's making reference to is the moral laws and the civil laws. No. Okay. And the ceremonial, which goes with God's holidays. Those are very easy to do. Okay. So when we go back to Galatians 5 and 22 again, remember John the Baptist said, bring forth fruit, meat yeah. for repentance. Yeah. Every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. So the fruit, we're getting an understanding of the fruit we all must bring forth. So the first fruit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That is the first fruit we got to bring forth, which is keeping the commandments okay many times people interpret that as an emotional high an emotional feeling it's not talking about that kind of love like the love you may have for your wife or the love you may have for a friend no it's talking about god's love which is obedience to his commandments that is the first fruit we all must bring forth read on verse 22 again uh galatians uh 522 eh? yes Galatians 5.22 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Uh-huh. Keep going. Then 23. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So when it says against such there is no law, meaning no law of condemnation. That's what he's talking about. You cannot condemn anyone, A, keeping the commandments filled with joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. There's no law that you can pull to condemn a brother or a sister walking like that. Okay? Okay. But my point was that love. I want your listeners to understand. 
The love is keeping God's commandments. It's not an emotional high. It's not a tingling in your toes or your feet. Why just feel so good? It's not talking about that. You understand? Yeah, sometimes when we go when we go to church and the music is being being played and the singing and this thing, the kind of you know the presence that we feel that yes. we think that we are worshiping God. Right, exactly. And that's not what the Bible is talking about. Now, oh, we all, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. King Solomon, a black man of the tribe of Judah, when he prayed for the nation of Israel, he made a profound statement in verse 46. Okay. 1 Kings 8, verse 46, right? Yes. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. So what I want y'all to see is that as King Solomon is praying for the Israelites, us, he says, for there is no man that sinneth not. All of us have sinned, and will continue to fall into sin, until Messiah returns and changes our stony hearts to flesh. Yeah. Okay? okay? That's why it says there's no man that sinneth not. But that is not an excuse, Papani. Many times we come into this truth and we like to make excuses for our sins. Let's find out what sin is. I want to hold that. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 4 so that the listener can understand exactly what sin is. You would be amazed that as we ask many Christians to explain sin, and very few of them can explain it with Scripture. Very few. Yeah. Okay. First John chapter 3, uh, verse, verse, four. verse 14. 4. 4. Okay. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth all the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. You see that? Yeah. Sin, that's the thing is, when you break God's law. Yeah. So all of us popping together sinners, we've all sinned. Yeah. The difference now is that we're coming back to the realization we're Israelites and must keep the commandments. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Sin is what caused us to go into slavery and to be colonialized. That's the result of sin. Okay? Yeah. Now we want, we want mercy from the Almighty. Okay? So the, the stipulation is, Return as Israel, accept his son, and keep the commandments. That is the stipulation that he requires of us. Yeah. And, okay. And there, there is this, uh, there is this quotation I love so much. I, I think it is in uh, Chronicles chapter seven. As if my people who are called by my name shall yes. humble themselves, pray and seek my and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I'm going to heal their land. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's excellent scripture. Yeah. Okay. Um, Second yeah. Chronicles seven is this seven fourteen? I, I think. Yeah, yeah. Let's read that. I love that. I yeah. love that. Second Chronicles seven verse fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Right. You see that part where it says, yeah. If my people which are called by my name. Yeah. Many Christians quote this verse, but they don't understand the first line. If my people which are called by my, my name. name. Okay? Yeah. When we go to Isaiah 63, let's hold Chronicles. Let's go to Isaiah 63 and 16. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 63, 16. Yeah. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham, being ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, thou, O oh Lord, our, our father, our redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. Go ahead. Now, 17. Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? Uh -huh. And harden our heart from thy fear. 
Return for thy servant's sake the tribes of thine inheritance. We oui. now eighteen. The people of thy holiness have possessed it, but a little while our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Here it comes. Yeah. Okay, nineteen. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. You see that? Yeah. The nations yeah, were yeah. never called by God's name. Yeah. The name he gave us is Israel. Does it? Okay? okay. God's name is on us. Hey, do you have uh, the Apocrypha there with you? Yeah, I have the Apocrypha. Let's, let's read Baruch chapter 2 verse 15. Baruch uh, 2 15. Okay. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, what we what we just read is uh, in Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter sixty three, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter sixty three, verse. Uh, we read sixteen to nineteen. Okay, sixteen to nineteen. Okay. Okay, so Baruch chapter two, verse fifteen. Baruch chapter two, verse fifteen. I read. That all the earth may know that thou art the Lord our God, because Israel and its posterity is called by thy name. You see that? Yeah. Israel is called by thy name. Okay. 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 So that what so what we're proving is that Second Chronicles seven fourteen that many Christians um quote they've never understood that we must go back to our name Israel. Okay. What they do is interpret that as Baptist, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness, and that's wrong. Israel is the name yeah. that God put on us. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Yeah. That is the name. Because yeah, I think in a, is a, is it Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 45, is it, I, I have sent them D. So Israel is our sending. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Isaiah 44, 5. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The uh so when we go back to Second Chronicles and fourteen, yeah. where it says, If my people which are called by my name yeah. shall humble, humble them. themselves. Humble ourselves to what? To God's laws. Mm -hmm. That's what we gotta do. Yeah. And pray and seek my face mm -hmm. and turn from their wicked Ways. That is the part that we don't want. Uh, many of our people don't want to yeah, do. Yeah, Turn yeah, from our ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is the that is the part I I love so much because it's it has always been a reminder. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Once once we turn from our wicked ways, it says, then will I hear yeah. from heaven. Yeah. Then will the Lord hear hear your prayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's, it. That's the prophecy, but we have to do it in that order. Yeah. And and the reason we don't like to turn from our wicked ways, watch this. Give me um Hebrews uh eleven twenty five. Okay. This is why we don't like to turn from our wicked ways, our sin. Hebrews 11, 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He said, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Mm -hmm. So, sin is pleasurable. Okay. That's why we don't like to give it up. You can live a carefree life. Have fun. Moses had a carefree life being a uh, high rank in Egypt. But he gave it up. He realized it was temporary. Okay? It was temporary. So he said, no, i got to stop all of this, this, this pleasure of sin. That's why he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. That's what we all must do. Okay? All of us. Okay. Some of us uh, like the pleasure of sin when it comes to marijuana or ganja. Yeah. Okay. Some of us like the pleasure of sin when it comes to adultery, mm -hmm. orgies, homosexuality. Some of us like the pleasures of sin when it comes to drunkenness, okay, or excess of eating, yeah. gluttony. Yeah, gluttony. Uh, those are the, these, these are various types of things. Some of us like the pleasure of sin in gossip and hatred, okay. These types of things we must give up because they're temporary. 
Okay? Yeah. Go to Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Right after uh, Psalms, I believe, after yeah, Proverbs. Yeah. Eight, Ecclesiastes 8, 11, yeah. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Because, sent, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So you know what that means? Because God doesn't punish us immediately, we, the hearts of our mind is set to do evil. What do we do? Many times, well, for example, we'll commit adultery. We didn't get judged. And we go, hey, God didn't kill me. He didn't judge me. Nothing bad happened. I'm going to do it again. So we continue to do it. Or we celebrate Easter and Christmas and go, God didn't punish me. I'm going to do it again next year. Okay? Or smoke weed, marijuana. God didn't punish me. I'm going to smoke it some more. That's what it means when it says because judgment is not executed speedily. Okay. okay. Therefore, our hearts are set to do evil. Okay. Okay. That's what it's going into. And this is why many of our people continue to sin. And the Most High has a set like that for a reason. Okay. He lets us get away. We think we're getting away, but we're not getting away. <laughs> <laughs> and this I is why <laughs> Romans 6 23 says the wages of sin is death. Yeah. You're building up a bank account, a spiritual bank account of sin. Now comes judgment, a section debt against us. <laughs> and uh, the, same, the same Ecclesiastes 11, the 12. I said, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his day be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them, that fear God, which fear before him. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So watch this. Look at Proverbs uh, 24, verse 16. So in this lesson, the question also often comes up, well, what happens when we sin? If we sin, we, we, we fall back into eating uh, monkey meat <laughs> or shrimp or crab or adultery, fornication. Proverbs 24, 16. Okay. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but a wicked shall fall into mischief. Right. You know what that means? A just man, when you sin, is generally by accident. You really didn't plan. You didn't want to do it. So you get back up and say, Father, forgive me. Let me get myself right. But the wicked man purposely continues to sin, and he go is so bad he remains in that condition, in that state. That's why that second part says what it says, what you just read. Read that uh, again. Uh, uh, that is Ecclesiastes 8, 11. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 24, 16, that one. Uh, the proverb uh, 24, 24, 16. Okay. It For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but a wicked shall fall into mischief. You see that part? But the wicked shall remorse. He has no sense of repentance. So he or she will stay in his sin and die. But the just man, the just woman, are those that stumble in this walk and sincerely go to the Father for mercy, for forgiveness, like Samson. Like David, like Solomon, you understand? Yeah. To understand, I don't, I don't want anyone to make excuse for their sins. Give me that. And um, Proverbs uh, is it twenty eight? You know what I want? Uh, no, no. Uh, Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Watch this. I don't want the listener to get the misunderstanding that it's okay to sin. Just go back and ask the Lord for mercy. Uh. -uh. Okay. Uh, uh, Proverbs twenty eight verse thirteen. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That's when the mercy comes in. The mercy, don't cover your sins means don't make excuse for your sin. Like for example, adultery, fornicate, those sexual sins, those are planned. Okay, understand, sexual sins are always planned out. It's not like you're eating a piece of meat. And then someone says, hey, there's pork in that. You see the difference? Yeah. A sexual sin is something you think about, yeah. you meditate on, and you execute it. Yeah. Okay? Like what King David did. Mm -hmm. The adultery he committed with uh, uh, Bathsheba, Bathsheba yeah. he thought about it, he saw her. Then once he got more involved in it, he said, I got to kill her husband. 
Remember, he, he took many steps yeah. to try to cover up that sin. And that's why the Lord killed his firstborn. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But in his repentance, God knew that his heart, David, was sincere. That is, that is Psalm 51, eh? The repentance. Yeah, yes. Oh, let's read that. I love that. <laughs> hey, but before we get Psalm 51, say, look at Proverbs 28 and verse 4. Okay, Proverbs 28, verse 4. Proverbs 28, verse 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. You see that? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, watch this. There's another one that's very heavy. Yeah. Uh, I just got to find it real quick. Let me look for it. Oh, here, here. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 9. It's right there. Verse 9 is what I want. Okay, I've actually marked it. So, 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You see that? Yeah. So that is a great stipulation. If you turn, like when you sin, you hear the law, you repent and ask the Lord for mercy. And then you keep the commandments, the laws in your life. But it says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. I mean, God don't want to hear your prayers. Because in your heart, you hate his law. You hate his commandments. So he's not hearing your prayers. Okay? This is why we suffer so as a people. Yeah. We suffer poverty, colonialization, and slavery. This is why we suffer. Okay? Yeah. Now let's look at the one you quoted in Psalm 51. Yeah. And let's start at verse 1. This is very heavy. Yeah. Very, very heavy and needful for our people. Yeah. Psalm 51. This is after David sinned and Nathan the prophet rebuked him mm -hmm. for committing adultery with Bathsheba and killing Uriah the Hittite. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Psalm 51, reading from verse 1. I have, mes uh, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Wash me thoroughly my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin uh -huh. for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me so you see verse three this is the part we all have to get to for i acknowledge my transgressions yeah. i acknowledge what laws i have broken this is what many of us refuse to do this is why it's important for us to study god's word study his laws how are you able to acknowledge your transgressions if you don't know what the transgressions are? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Like many times people in the church say, oh, I'm a sinner, saved by grace. I'll say, what is sin? They will, I don't know. They, they, so, how are you a sinner saved from grace? <laughs> they, they, they give fantasy definitions. Yes. Like, exactly. like, like in the school, they ask you, what is an atom? Yes. So, they, yes. so that you started to recite. Yeah. <laughs> So, in order to acknowledge our transgressions, we must know what sins are yes. that we have broken. For example, look at, uh, we're going to come back here. Look at Romans 7 and verse 7, I think. Yeah. Look at it. Okay, concerning the law and the holiness. Yes, yes, Romans 7 verse 7. Romans 7 verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid, nay. I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. You see what Paul says? For I had not known lust, meaning he would not have known what lust is, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. That's how he got the understanding that he was in sin. Okay. The law teaches you what sin is. The commandment, Thou shalt not covet. Anything that has thy neighbors, now his house, his ox, his ass, his wife, his servant, that's lust, that is coveting. Mm -hmm. So Paul said you will only understand sin by the law. That's why we must study God's laws to understand what we are guilty of. Okay, how can you say a sinner's prayer and you don't know what sins you have committed? You see the foolishness of Christianity? Yeah. That's how we know it is a false religion. Okay? People say, oh, I pray to the Lord for forgiveness of my sin. 
What sins have you committed? Uh, 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 I don't know. So it's ridiculous. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So, so like, like you were saying, you were saying, let's say for instance, like a, a couple or somebody who is, who is, who is married and is being faithful to the marriage. So yes. even when it comes to the sin of adultery, it's not, it's not being found culpable. But what about something like uh, eating a uh, uh, pork? Right. Because you know, I was I was by then also hosting a program, and I was talking about not eating pork. Mm -hmm. He said, "Oh no, we are we are under the grace. And, you know this, there's you know this uh, food and everything. God said what actually enters into us doesn't defile us. So quickly we went. Uh, I just uh, refer him to uh, is it Isaiah chapter sixty six. Yes. Where he said that uh, those people who actually eat swine and rat, yeah, it's an abomination to God, and God is going to send them into the lake of fire. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, hundred percent correct. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes there are, uh, if you don't study the law, you might feel okay, but there are certain things because we don't study the law, we commit those sins even without conscience, without yes. even knowing it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That is true. Now, uh, let me find this. There's a law in the Bible about uh, sinning and ignorance in the book of Numbers, if I can find it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Oh, Numbers 15. Numbers, uh, numbers 15, 47. Uh, let's read verse, uh, yeah, 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 27. Read Leviticus, Leviticus 4 is better. I like this one. Leviticus 4 and 27. Leviticus 4, 27. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 27. And if any one of the, of the common people sin through ignorance, while he does somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done, and be guilty. Go ahead. 28. Or uh, if his sin, which he has seen, come to his knowledge, then he shall bring his offering, a kid of the goat, a female without blemish, for his sin, which he has seen. So, even when you sin through ignorance, under Moses you had to offer a sacrifice. But we know that now the sacrifice is Christ, right? Yeah. So, but we still have to acknowledge when we sin through ignorance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes we do sin through ignorance. Because oh. you don't know. Okay. So this is what our people must understand. There's still a judgment for that. This is why um, Christ said, let me see, how does it go? He said about being beaten with few stripes. Uh -huh. Let me see, i got to find it. Uh, in Luke, Luke chapter 12, I'm going to show you the same thing that Christ said, that what we just read in Leviticus 4, is in the book of Luke, chapter 4, I mean, chapter 12, verse 47 and 48. Luke. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You see that? Yeah. It says, uh, and a servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, Shall be beaten with many stripes, many. You're going to get a worse punishment. Watch mm -hmm. the next verse. Now, 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few strife. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So notice he talked about the servant that knew God's will and did it not than a servant that sinned through ignorance. You're still going to get a punishment. This is what Christ is saying. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing Moses taught us. Okay? Okay. okay? okay. The same thing about sinning through ignorance and sinning presumptuously. Presumptuously means you know the law and you do against it despite. Okay. Like, for example, Numbers chapter 15, verse 29 to 31, is saying the same thing. Thing. Watch. Numbers uh, 15, eh? Yes, verse 29 to 31. Numbers 15, 29. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance. 
both for him that is born among the children of Israel, and for a stranger that sojourneth among them. Go ahead. 30. But a soul that doeth out presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Really? Yeah. 31. Because he has despised the word of the Lord, and has broken his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So you see, he talked about sinning through ignorance and the presumptuous sinner. Okay. The presumptuous sinner is the man or woman that despises God's law. They hear it and refuse to obey it. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing Christ said, that he that knew God's will, the servant that knew God's will and did it not, shall be beaten with many stripes. Okay. But the servant that did not know shall be beaten with few stripes. Mm -hmm. Okay? You see, he's saying that yep. Christ said the same thing Moses said here. It's the same thing. And this is what our people must understand regarding the Old Testament and the New Testament. They're saying the same thing. One was under the Levitical covenant of animal sacrifice. This new covenant is under the sacrifice of Christ, the Son of God. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But they're still saying very similar things. Okay? So in this truth, poverty, this is what we must do. Look at Luke 13, verse 24. Luke 13, 24. Try to enter in at a straight gate. Try, try to enter in at a straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in. And shall not be able. You see that word strive, S T R I V E? Yeah. Strive. Strive means to fight, to yeah. struggle. To struggle, yeah. Right, so that's what we must do in this truth, okay? That we, know, we learn the commandments, then temptations come to turn us back to the sins we used to do in the world. So now we must strive, we must fight, we must struggle against the sin within. You understand? Yeah. And sometimes the sin within is triggered by people we know in the world. Yeah. An ex-girlfriend, an ex-boyfriend, friends we know in the world who we used to run with. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to strive against that stuff. Yeah. You know? And some of them, you see, some of them also, when they know that maybe uh, you become a repentant soul, uh, sometimes they come with a whole lot of tricks just to uh, get you back. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's what they do. Now watch this. Look at Luke 14, verse 26, the next chapter. When we come into this truth, we must prepare ourselves and consider what is to come. Luke 14, 26. Luke 14, 26. Uh, yeah. If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Properly, what does that mean? Yeah. Then, what is that? Yeah, then it means you, you have to deny all the people, all the people, even being close or friends, who will actually drag you back into the world. Yes, yes. So, it's not... He's saying be willing to cut them off. Like another scripture, remember Matthew 18, verse 8, or Matthew 5 and 30, say the same thing. Mm. Where it says, uh, and if your right hand offend thee, yeah. cut it off, yeah. and cast it from thee. Mm. So your right hand might be your mother or your father, mm. or your wife, mm -hmm. or your sister, your brother. Mm. It's someone close to you yeah. that you love. Mm -hmm. But those persons are telling you, let's go back to the sins we used to do. So that's why Christ says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and your children and brethren and sisters, yea, in your own life, meaning your own lust within, he cannot be my disciple. You have to be willing to cut things off at the drop of a dime, Papa Nee. Oh. This is what the listeners must understand. Okay? I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you, let's look at... uh. Matthew 18 and 8. I'm going to give you a precept with this. Because people say, what does it mean, hate your mother, hate your father, 
Hate your brother, hate your sister. Matthew That's 18. 8. Uh huh. Matthew 18, verse 8, eh? Yes. Okay, Matthew 18, verse 8. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them, cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life hot or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Right. Now he's using the example of your hand or your foot as someone very close to you, dear to you in your life. You have to be willing to cut them off. Now, I'm going to give you a plainer example in the Bible. Deuteronomy 13, verse 6. Deuteronomy 13, 6. Okay. It's saying the same thing as what we've just been reading about hating your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your son, and cutting off your hand, your foot. De the best yeah. example. De Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is in thy own soul, and ties thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou, nor thy fathers. Read. Seven, namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Me? Eight, thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shall thy spare, neither thou shalt conceal him. Nine, that thou shalt surely kill him, thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. So you see that? So even, now under Moses it was death, but so when Christ explained it, he just gave an analogy, a metaphor, a similitude, or a parable. Just cut them off from you, meaning separate. Yeah. That's what Christ was saying, because we know we cannot kill people today. Yeah. Right, Papa Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. so Moses was saying, if your wife, your friend, who's like your own soul, even your son, he said, don't consent unto them, but, and don't have pity on them. That is the same thing Christ was saying in Luke Okay, Luke, four, uh, Luke 14 and 26, uh -huh. Matthew 18, verse 8. They're saying the same thing. Oh, okay. Cut okay. them off from your life. Okay. 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 You understand that, Papa? Yeah, it is, it, is very, it is very, very clear. It is very, you see, that is uh, the reason why uh, also I have sometimes people who listen to me, I do tell them that, you know, the, the meat of the whole Bible or, or the, all the New Testament's writing is based on the Old Testament writing, which we call the Torah. But it right. is unfortunate, unfortunately that people just want to uh, make a distinction. So they, they said, okay, Old Testament and the New Testament. But rather, it is not old. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it is the instruction, you see? Yes. 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 So anybody who wanted to understand the New Testament, please. Learn the author, learn the law, learn the law. Exactly, exactly. Let's look at First Peter 4, verse 3. Because the Apostle Peter said something very heavy for us. First Peter, First Peter. Chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Bear me a second, listeners, we'll, I, do, I do write. Yeah, we'll start at First Peter 4, verse 3. That's where we'll stop. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Then we walk. In lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, rivaling, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Mm -hmm. For, okay. Wherein they think it strange, it, they, they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Right, so let's examine that. In verse 3 again, for the time past of our life, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Meaning, there came a time when we lived like the nations, because the word Gentiles means nations. We lived like them, we wanted to be like them. Particularly, we wanted to be in this day and age like the so-called white man. Just like during Peter's time, we wanted to live like the Romans, okay? Yeah. 
So it says, when we walked in lasciviousness, okay? Let me look up that word, lasciviousness. Do you know what that word means? Lasciviousness. L lasciviousness is like, uh, uh, is, a, is a kind of a, a sexual pleasure to entice. Yes. So that, 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 yeah. It says, uh, offensive sexual desires. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that is the life we came from. Where we would have sex with one woman today, the next woman tomorrow, and someone else next week. Okay? Those are those sexual sins that Peter is warning us about how we used to live. Then it says lust. Now that the word lust can cover a whole lot of things. Yeah. You can lust for marijuana. You can lust for money. Okay? Yeah. You can lust for food. I mean, overeating. Yeah. Then it says excess of wine. You know why it says excess of wine? That is drunkenness. Yes, drunkenness. Because there's no sin to drink, but drunkenness is the sin. Yeah. Okay? Then it says revelings. Do you know what that word revelings means? The revelings, no, actually, I've never checked uh, the meaning of reveling. Okay, I'm checking it now. Reveling means uh, parties, drunkenness, drinking, dancing at parties. Okay. Celebrating at parties. Okay, like like Oggy. Yeah, it goes into that too. <laughs> but you know how we, you have friends that say, oh, let's go to the club. Yeah. There's a party at the club, and we all go, and you know the music at these clubs, these parties, are music songs of adultery. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so we look for the single woman in the club because we want to get with her. Yeah. And we give her a lot of drink. Yeah. Drink, woman, drink, drink, drink. <laughs> and then, then you dance in the rubber dub style. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then it says uh, banqueting. Yeah. Do you know what banqueting yeah, is? Yeah, banqueting is, is also a party, like a, a orgy. But a, a party yeah. like a wild one. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Yep, it says banquet is a large meal or feast. Yeah. Okay? Like Thanksgiving is a banquet. Yeah. When you have people come to eat food, then you dance, you drink, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay? Then it says an abominable idolatries. Okay? Yeah. That goes into idol worship and uh, those type of things. Verse 4. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, meaning riotous living, mm -hmm. speaking evil of you. So mm -hmm. the friends you used to run with in the world, or it might have been your wife, or your mother, or father, now they speak evil against you because you decide not to live like that no more. Okay. So these are the strivings we must go through in this truth, Papa Nee. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what new listeners, new brothers and sisters who are trying to get their lives right, must understand. Okay. Okay. You got that? Yeah, I, 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 I got it. So sometimes, you know, when I'm silent, I do a lot of reflections over, you know, the meanings and, you know, a whole lot of things. Right. Uh, because now, you know what people do? They say, what's wrong with um, hanging out with my old friends? Mm. Proverbs twelve twenty six. Because when we come into this truth, we, we want to hold on to our wicked friends. Now, we have shared the truth with our friends, but you see, your friend is not listening to the Bible. But we still want to hold on to our friend, our son, our wife. And this is what happens. Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs 12, 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. By the way of the wicked, seduces them. Seduces them. You yeah. see that? Yeah. You come into this truth, you're more excellent than your neighbor. Why? Because you've repented. You've tried to change your life. Then it says, but the way of the wicked seduces them. Meaning they will get you to follow them. They will seduce you. Mm -hmm. Papa Nee, remember when we had fun when we did this, that, and the other? Yeah. Remember yeah. how we used to do yeah. this? And you start to listen to them. After time, you find yourself back in the filth you tried to escape from. You understand? Yeah. That's why we have to separate from that. Like it says in Ephesians 5 and 11. Let's read that. Okay. Ephesians 5, 11. Yes, yes. These precepts will help us in this walk. Yeah. Okay? Because it's not enough just to know that we're Israel. We have to 
change our lives. And one of the steps in changing our lives is separating from the wicked. Okay? You may have, you may have used to do drugs. Now you're trying to stop that. You cannot hang out with a drug addict or a drug dealer. Yeah. Okay? Ephesians 5, 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but do rather reprove them. You see that? Have no fellowship with them, meaning friendship. Mm -hmm. It's not saying you can't talk to them because it says reprove them. In order to reprove them, you're talking to them. It's fellowship means that bond, mm -hmm. that friendship. You're still close with each other. The Bible says don't do that. Okay? Why? Because like we just read in Proverbs 12, 26, the, this wicked ways will seduce you. But the way of the wicked seduces them. You will become seduced to go back to the way you used to live. Okay? Okay. Look, okay. look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Okay, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Yes. Because this whole walk is a struggle, a fight, Papani. Like Christ said, strive to enter the straight gate. The straight gate is the kingdom. Yeah. you got to fight to get there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, first Corinthians chapter ten verse thirteen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that yes. ye may be able to bear it. So you see that so many times we come into this truth and we think that our temptation, nobody understands what I'm going through. That's not true. They have no temptation to take in you, but such as is common to man. That's why we were just reading about lasciviousness, excess of wine, lust. Those are all common to man. Okay? So, for example, I'll give a few weird examples. You may talk about your lust is adultery. Okay, that's common. Somebody else might say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. I lust after men. I'm homosexual. That's still a lust, a sexual perverted sin. It's still very common. Or some, I lust after children. Those sexual things are still common to man. That's what he's saying here. So don't think that your temptation, nobody understands it. God doesn't know what I'm going through. I'm some unknown, uncommon thing that I'm bad. No. Your Temptation is common to man. Like excess of wine. Or what else do we read? Revelings. Uh, what do we read la, earlier? La, lasciviousness. Yes. Banqueting. Banqueting, yes. Those things are all common to man. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Meaning, whatever comes on you, God knows he will only allow you to be tempted to the point that you can bear it, mm -hmm. okay? He wants you to fight, Papa Nee. Yeah. He wants us to fight. Fight against this. Fight against that. Okay? You understand? Yeah, 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 yeah. And he says he will make a way to escape. Meaning, the way to escape is several ways. Yeah. With meditating on his scriptures, counseling or talking with a brother or sister mm -hmm. who's in the scriptures, okay? Yeah. There's the ways to escape. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. These are the ways God wants us to escape these temptations. Okay? Now, now uh, Bishop, the other time, a young, uh, my, my nephew was actually discussing something with me that he, he read concerning Apostle Paul. Though I have not found anything likely in the scriptures, but he said uh, that Apostle Paul wrote so many things wrote so many things but he said that in order for you that maybe you may laugh after other women or maybe you may bend with passion then you have to marry yes yes then it means apostle paul also went through such you know uh, uh, uh you know such things and he yes. knows how it feels and that's the reason why he wrote he, he wrote those things yes exactly yes it is yeah uh let me look there's a scripture that says that in Romans chapter 7. Romans okay. chapter 7. Yes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let me see what verse is it. We start at 15. 15. 
For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was going, he was in this chapter, he's explaining his own strivings and struggles. That he also erred in this truth. He said, the things I want to do, I do not. Why? So he was vexed with himself, falling, like we read earlier, a righteous man falleth seven times, yeah. but getteth back up. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the book of Proverbs, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So watch this. Go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 2. This is what all believers must understand when they come to the Lord. It's not going to be an easy walk. It's not going to be a bed of roses. Okay. Ecclesiastes uh, and the Apocrypha. Yeah. Chapter, chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see that? Yeah. So he's letting you know when you come to this truth, prepare your soul for temptation. A good example is the prophet Job. Uh -huh. Remember the Most High said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Mm -hmm. And Satan said, Yes, but you have a hedge around him. Mm -hmm. He said, If you let me touch him, he will curse you. So the Lord allowed him to test Job. He took away his uh, finances, mm -hmm. his jobs, his economics, and his, then his children, then his health. Okay? So when you come to this truth, the Most High will allow Satan to try you. Why? To see if you love him. Okay? Read on. Read on. <laughs> okay, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Two, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. You see that? Constantly endure what you go through. That's the same thing Paul was struggling with in Romans 7. Yeah. Okay? Then it says, and make not haste in time of trouble. I mean, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't go back into the world again. Okay. Don't go back to the old man you used to be. Read on. 3. Cleave unto him, and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Like the prophet Job. Remember at the end in Job 40, it said he was blessed sevenfold more than what he had. It's saying the same thing. This is what we always must meditate on, believe, and reverence. Okay? Uh, Let's read on. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. For whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Right. Like Job was changed to a low estate. He was a rich man, then he became poor. Many times, brothers and sisters come into this truth, they may lose what they have. That is a trial. That is temptation. That is a struggle you must battle through. Okay? okay. Read. Five. For God is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. It's like when you when you get gold popping from the earth. Yeah. In the gold there may be elements of zinc, tin, iron, and silver. You have to melt it mm. in order to get the impure right. elements out of it. Yeah. So likewise with us, we're the gold. God says, I gotta melt you. Yeah. I'm gonna put you in fire, meaning trials, tribulations, struggles, for you to come out of it. Okay? Pur purification process. Yes, that's what it is. Mm. That's what it is. Yeah. So this is the process that we must go through in this truth. Okay? okay. We have had brothers and sisters who come into this truth very wealthy, and then they lose their monies overnight. They're like, I don't understand what's happening to me. And we have to show them the scriptures. These are things that the Lord will put some of us through. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's going to be different for every man and every woman. Okay? Yeah. You may have been a brother who had many women. You come into this truth, now you can't find one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So these are the things we go through. Okay? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, it, it, it's, it's very. Now, I think also in the book of uh, the book of uh, Matthew, I think is it chapter fifteen. You see, you we must endure to the end. Now, yes. during 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 the past times, uh, there there is a saying that there is there, if I I could remember, 
uh, there's a saying that once saved, saved forever. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was, that was the slogan. You, that is no joking. Is it once saved, saved forever? So you know that you belong to the church. You may be tempted to do all kinds of things, but in your mind, you know, once you have professed with your mouth, that is all. That's so wrong, Papini. Yeah. And I gotta, I gotta show you that scripture that proves that's wrong. And uh, I believe it's Peter, Second Peter, yeah. chapter two, and verse twenty. This destroys the stupid teaching. Once saved, always saved. That's false. The Second Peter, chapter two, yeah. and twenty, verse twenty. Yes. Okay. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end. And, and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So let's explain that. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the pollutions of the world are the world's religions, political groups, and sins in terms of sexuality, in terms of excess of wine, in terms of revelings, in terms of hatred. Those are the pollutions of the world, okay? Then it, notice what it says, Papini. They are again entangled Tango. therein. You see that part? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. then they come a time where we may struggle. Remember what we read at the beginning where it says, a righteous man falleth seven times, yeah. but get us back up. Yeah. So notice it says, they are again entangled therein and overcome. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're not getting back up again. You see that? Yeah. And yeah. over, meaning you're overcome with the sins of the world. It says the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Meaning you are worse now than when you first came in. Into the truth. Yes. Okay. Now watch the next verse. Uh, uh, verse 21 verse uh, 21 for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them you see that so what do you mean once saved always saved that's a lie yeah that is a lie peter said it had been better for you never to have known the way of righteousness. Then after that they have known it to turn from the holy commandment mm -hmm. delivered unto them. Read. Uh, 22. But it, it is happening unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Right, the sow is a pig. A sow, yeah, that's right. A yeah. sow is a pig. A pig. Like yeah. you wash a pig off and it goes right back in the mud. Yeah. So Peter was getting on Israelites who come into the truth and they return to their vomit. They return to their filth. They return to their sin. Like the pig. You wash the pig off clean, then the pig goes right back to the mud again. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Peter is comparing the Israelite who is entangled in overcoming their sin to the dog and to the pig. Okay? Watch this, Hebrews 6 and 4. Once saved, always saved. That's not true. Hebrews 6, verse 4. Hebrews 6, verse 4. This is going into if you are overcome. It's not talking about if you struggle and fall and get back up. Hebrews 6 and 4 is you fell and you stay falling. And you're not getting back up again. Watch. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tested of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost fight, mm -hmm. and have tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Six, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. You see that? So this is the brother or sister who gets entangled in their sin and are overcome in their sin. This is not the brother or sister who stumbles and falls and tries to get up again. This is the brother or sister who doesn't, who cannot repent. They don't want to repent. It says it is impossible for those who are once in life to renew them to repentance. 
So the slogan or saying of once saved, always saved, that's wrong, Papani. That's not scriptural at all. <laughs> you know? And it's a harsh reality. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. That is true. Yes, yes, that is yes. True. You know, <laughs> Bishop, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You see, uh, you know, every time I do say that the beast, we are, we are dealing with the beast. Mm -hmm. Now, it is the same beast which actually took over uh, the interpretations of the book that we are holding now. The right. book which is supposed to be our heritage, but we lost it. Yes. Is it because uh, you have sinned against me, you are going to what? To be discontinue in your heritage. Yes. And this book actually got into the hands of the enemies. Mm -hmm. They have actually manipulated everything in it because they know when they teach us the right precepts, God's presence will actually flow in us. So what do they have to do? They have to change the interpretation. Yes. So we, you know, at first, though I don't like a, a pork too much, it's not something that I love too much, but once a while, while during the, my, my past times, I know it is, there's nothing wrong with that. Until I learn from the scriptures, that these things are detestable things, not even in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. It is detestable, whether New Testament or Old Testament. Right. But check a, a Christian group like the Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. When they go to the, their assemble, the only chief meat they eat over there is a, a, is a swine or a pork, and I cannot understand that. <laughs> wicked, wicked as hell. That's it. Exactly. And yes. So, so you see, we, we, you know, we've been made uh, to, uh, to understand that all these things are nothing. But the grace of God is there just to cover all those things. So freely, like uh, you say in the law, there's liberty in the law. So like we are being justified to do everything. The mercy and the grace is there for us. Right. But uh, this kind of teaching is, is a very good teaching. Like I, uh, I've been saying, I've been jotting everything down. I've been jotting everything down. And once in a while, we shall come back and be going through. Yes. So it's going to be like a mirror. It's like a, a reflection. Yes. Yeah. You, you know? Exactly. It, it, we know that it's not, it's not, it's not an easy, easy, easy journey. Right. It's not an easy journey. Yeah. We, we strive. It's yes. a struggle. It's a cause. Yes. But uh, we, we, we ask God for... Uh, his power. Yes, exactly. That's what we do. God for his power, like how uh, Apostle Paul put it that anytime we want to do this, you know, it is, you know, the, the thing struggles with you. You want to right. do good, but yes. the thing is also they're struggling with you. Yes. So we ask the power of God that we, he may give us the power also to understand the laws so that we put those laws into practice. Yes, exactly. I think that is the most important thing. Yes, 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 Papa. All praises to the Most High. Yeah, uh, a lot has been said, and uh, you know we have to hand over to the, uh, uh, the 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 show for the baton to yes. the second show. So yes, sir. right now we're going to wrap up, and uh, everybody is uh, hearing your closing remarks, and you know, so that uh, we can end the show. Okay, hey, brothers, sisters, all praises to the saints abroad and near. Visit our website at www.israelunite.org. And Lord's will, we'll be out to Belgium, I pray, coming soon. I don't know when, but yeah. Lord's willing. Lord's yeah. willing. Amen, 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 <laughs> amen, amen. And we are also waiting earnestly for the day that your, 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 your plane will touch the tarmac of the Brazos, uh, uh, Brazos Airport. Yes. It's going to be a very wonderful day. Yes, so, sir. like I've always been saying, all praises to the Most High and greetings to all the saints. Yes. Over there. Yes, sir. And we say all peace, praise. shalom. All right, shalom. Yeah. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.